Well, my favorite thing about being a quarterback at the University of Texas is, you know, I've, I've dreamed about it my whole life. McCoy keeps it. Go McCoy. Touchdown. When they pressure, McCoy fires complete over the middle. Guarding to the end zone. Touchdown. Now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of living a dream, and, and it's awesome. I want to make the most of it. Now, it was a nightmare for Colt McCoy the first couple of games against the Aggies, but very sharp tonight. 18 of 21, 177 yards passing. He's also run it for a touchdown. Chris Fowler back with Craig James and Jesse Palmer. Aaron Andrews down on the field. Once again, our Thanksgiving traditional rivalry game here. And, you know, the Aggies came in you know, big underdogs, knowing they needed something you know, special. A big effort to, to hang around, and yeah. I'm not sure they're hanging around. No, you know what, they're not. I mean, Texas is dominating this football game in all phases except for the scoreboard. So it'd be interesting to see what they said in the locker room about the style points, because you know the whispering was going on between the players. Well, Cole McCoy's been sensational so far. He's 18 of 21 in this game. He's thrown two touchdowns. He's run for a touchdown. But he's been magic on third down. He's six for six. He's been able to keep drives alive. Justin Tucker for the long horn. Boots it away. The Yankees will start from their 20. Home Depot coaching adjustments. Yeah, you may have to stay up late at night at Home Depot for this adjustment, but somehow A&M has to stop Texas on third down. They're 9 of 11 on third down. That's a high percentage. So somewhere along the way, you're going to have to make a big play on third down at A&M. Well, defensively for A&M, whether you're bringing four guys or you're going to bring eight guys, you have to find a way to keep Colt McCoy in the pocket. He has killed A&M tonight. Once he's gotten outside, whether it's been running or throwing the football down the field for big plays. Tried all kinds of blitzes, hit him a lot. It's McGee, still at quarterback, pitches it to Gibson. And he's hit for a loss. Sergio Kindle got him. Samsung Mobile presenting our first half stats. Two first downs for the Aggies. They ran 18 plays. They gained 54 of the 74 in that one swing pass to Goodson. And, and you know what? When you circle that, Jesse, Mike Goodson has to run past Texas arms. You can't jump around UT's defense. They're too fast. Well, we talked to Nolan Cromwell again, the offensive coordinator. He said they were going to try to set the edge on the outside. I don't know if he anticipated how fast this Texas defense is. Second and 14, McGee. Delivers low. It's made by Terrence McCoy, his first of the night. Uh Aaron, what was uh, Coach Sherman's take on the first half? Well, I wanted to ask him about that fourth and one, why he kicked the field goal instead of going for it. He said he wanted, he felt kicking the field goal was the best way to get some points at this point with his offense. As you guys can see, Stephen McGee starting the second half. Coach Sherman saying he feels like Stephen is moving the ball a little better. They want to try to go with him as long as they can. And guys, good news, maybe the only good news for the Aggies defense, Jordan Pugh back. X-rays negative on a bruised left rib. Turn thanks. I guess it's relative terms. McGee versus Johnson moving the ball. It's McGee escaping here. Puts a short pass and a first down. DeAndre Smith still running into Texas territory. It was McGee's turn to flirt with that line of scrimmage before getting rid of the ball. And I think, you know what, Jesse, the reason that he pulls up and throws this football is McGee knows that his shoulder's bad. He wants nothing to do with contact down the field and the way his receiver worked and got up the field for him. Well, and Texas was playing a man defense, which means players' Ooh. backs were to the quarterback. But you see the block by Jamie McCoy, the tight end, First peeling end. back and allowing more room. Stephen McKee getting fired up. Yeah. Look at him getting players' faces. Yeah, it was Tawny Blake Giddy and the freshman who got lit in for a long time. He's a true freshman. He'll have his, uh, his eyeballs looking better the next time. Let's play action on first down. McGee pressured and trying to find it to Lane. I don't know if I'd be doing too much taunting of this Texas defense after the way they've dominated you in the first half, Stephen. I don't know if I'd be throwing those kind of footballs right there either. <laughs> and you're scrambling around trying to throw balls out late on the perimeter like that. There are a lot of DBs from Texas lurking, looking at him with those eyes. He keeps flirting with that. He's going to get pick six. But I agree with the passing. you got negative rushing yards, square peg, round hole. Sometimes it's not happening. you got to throw the football. And they threw for 362 in that win in College Station a year ago against Texas. McGee keeps it. Steps up and fires off short. This is Tannehill breaking free and Brian Tannehill, the freshman inside the 30. 
You look at opening drive in the second half for Texas A&M. Beasley misses the tackle in the open field. But here's what I like about Ryan Tannehill. The former quarterback still wants to be a quarterback in the future. They've moved him around. Look at McGee step up under control. Well, we asked Nolan Cromwell about Tannehill. He said, look, bottom line, he's one of our two or three best athletes. And for a big guy that is six foot four, he's got unbelievable quicks. But you see Stephen McGee here doing a great job just moving around, keeping the play alive and spitting the football out. This is Goodson in motion. Sets up to the left of McGee, and he gets the ball on the screen. That was the lone productive play for the Aggies in the first half, except five here. Well, I like the play call here for Texas A&M. Just getting Mike Goodson, one of your fastest players, again, out on the perimeter. It's all jumbled up inside, and you're getting blown up at the point of attack by Texas' D-line. Spit it outside with his room to run. Don't you sense watching McGee right now, though, that he's settled in and he stopped thinking about his body and his shoulder, and he's seeing the game right now? Goodson behind Jaworski Lane, but he's stoned. Uncle Roy met him at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and six. I, you know, this play here, I, know we, I didn't ask for the replay on the deal, but you can clearly see there from behind, he's got Goodson has to run past him. There was a running there opportunity. He's got to trust his speed running past these arm tackles. I hope they don't consider a field goal attempt if they don't get this first down. You'd have to believe you know, two plays to get six yards there. And the flag. This got more Ball complicated. Started. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's uh, a big missed opportunity for Texas A&M. They had Ryan Tannehill matched up on Ryan Palmer in the slot. A six-inch height difference down the football field. Texas was showing man coverage. That would have been a great opportunity for Stephen McGee to take a shot and try to score points. Seventh penalty for the Aggies. He's into the third and 11. Take it to Smith, and McGee slips and is hammered. Sergio Kindle got him. And you see McGee chase him down. Stephen McGee has walked over to the Texas sideline after Kindle. Sergio Kindle was a dual threat in high school. He was an All-American. He's down here at All-American running back and linebacker. Watch his pad level, how strong Ooh. and fast he is. He drilled McGee. And then watch McGee come up after him. He didn't like this little dance. He walked all the way over to the Texas sidelines. He's a feisty guy. He knows this is his one chance after a very frustrating senior season, a career, really, that hasn't quite panned out the way he thought it would be. He was a big-time recruit when he came to College Station. And that was a promising drive, snuffed out on a big hit by Kindle. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Brantley will have more room now to try to pin Texas deep. But how about Will Muschamp? You know, takes a linebacker, puts him down, gets a mismatch with a lineman, runs right by the tackle. <laughs> yeah, but he did this as a freshman. He, here he is, his first start in <laughs> his career was against Texas. You know, Vince Young's over the other side, and he is just chirping and wolfing, getting hit hard with the Longhorns. That Texas won that game. But McGee was impressing his teammates, bowing up, jumping up, John. I don't know about that, though. Yeah, you just look bush late when you do that. I don't know. Randley, back him up five, still boots it into the end zone. So Texas starts at the 20, and we'll show you Sergio Kindle lighting up McGee one more time. Mm. Mm. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime. It's by Applebee's Thanksgiving edition here in Austin, Texas. 21-3 Longhorns. Some feistiness in this 115-game rivalry. Both teams getting into it, jawing a bit as they ran out in the field. Some shots have been delivered to both quarterbacks. There's been some jawing. Seems like the Longhorns have it under control. And they'll try to add to their point total right here from their 20 on first down. McCoy keeps it, fires downfield, Cosby. 
You have to think they've been softening up this defense now, perhaps some downfield shots and some bigger plays. They got 25 there. I'm really impressed with Cole McCoy on this play, using his eyes and seeing the soft spot down the sidelines. They run a little zone read play action as he's rolling out. He sees the corner, fight up on the out route. And there's Quan Cosby just waiting patiently, doing a great job sitting down in the zone. Don't you think people are seeing why not just 80% nearly completion finish, but he's got a strong arm. And first down, Whitaker is smothered on the shovel pass. Michael Bennett wrapped him up. And, and, and when you talk about what he throws the football, I mean, his athletic ability, I think we've seen that this season, but his legs setting up plays, his poise, to me, the accuracy is just uncanny. It's just rare. And you go back in the big games this year, 80% against Oklahoma, 91% against Missouri, throws 18 straight completions against Oklahoma State. Texas wouldn't be where they are right now without Colt McCoy. Wouldn't be the same football team. <laughs> you think? Not even close. <laughs> this is Collins in the slot. Brandon Collins, a big night, breaking free. Come the big plays. It was grinding, methodical offense in the first half. Now they're getting downfield. One of the key words that we talked about earlier, Greg Davis saying, manage a game. That doesn't mean go into a shell. You see offensive linemen and wide receivers all finding bodies downfield. Excellent blocking. And Charlie Tanner, the left guard, did a great job setting up a block to really seal the edge for Brandon Collins to get down the sideline. Again, athletic offensive line, able to run and get position. How about Fozzie Whitaker, the back, blocking way downfield. And off the Bondrell McGee in a quick burst. You know, and everybody's sitting at home right now. There's no question. The voters, they're all trying to gauge right now exactly how powerful and good is the University of Texas. Is it about the point total in this game, or do you just watch and look at other factors in mind? Common fans, that's what they see at the end of the day. Points. You see numbers on the scoreboard, and it's either impressive or it's not. Boy keeps it. Has a crease. Colt McCoy. Touchdown number two. there will get you not only the trip to New York, but might get you some hardware walking out of there. This is really the ultimate. Jesse, you smell the end zone at about the 10. Well, Michael Bennett completely <laughs> bit on the fake inside. That opened the door for McCoy. But again, the speed and the wherewithal. There's a reason this guy was leading the team in rushing coming into the game. Two rushing touchdowns, two touchdown passes. And for Lawrence. Still perfect on the season in PATs, and the lead grows. Boy, appearing to limp just a bit as he came off the field, went airborne to get that touchdown. 80 yards, five plays, 28-3. Good job. A defensive struggle for seven on seven. It was a bit surprising, but, but, but good job there. They're winning quarterback. Well, we had to make a halftime adjustment on you, man. You were having a career day. You look like Michael Crabtree out there. Yeah, the thing is sort of clutching and grabbing in the second half, but I, I, we don't whine. We don't, we don't whine right here when we lose. Tucker to kick it away. Ray's going to have a chance at the five. Freshman stops at the 20 yard line. Best thing is, we played in a, a, on a cow pasture over there, an intramural field. I don't, I don't think Bevo would want to set foot on it, and everybody said injury free, which is the real thing to be thankful for today. All I know is, we, we've, I've had Advil afterwards. <laughs> I'm sore, my quads, my tendons, my back, my hamstrings. I'm with you. I'll tell you what, we were playing uphill that whole first <laughs> half, and all of a sudden, we got faster in the second half. Started throwing the ball downfield. Chunks of yards. Big the man here kept trying to throw deep. You're, you're more of a possession. Methodical, man. There. Methodical down the field. Chip away. Sets you up. Lull you to sleep. Hit the big one. Good fun. And an Aggies misfire here. Execution. Really hadn't been there on the road. And, you know, this team, 
False start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Penalized a ninth time. This is not the year that you know Mike Sherman en en envisioned. To beat by Arkansas State. They missed some field goals. Had some crucial mistakes in the opening game and really haven't been competitive in the Big 12 South. There's an article here, is AM the new Baylor in this division? They, they were beaten by the Bears badly and, and were over against the Big 12 South this season. McGee steps up, just shovels it forward and very short game before Kendall makes the tackle and Tempers again. As we check with Reese Davis. Never lose it. Reese, thanks. Can't wait to get to the home of the Pokes for the Bedlam football game this Saturday. And then we'll take a timeout here midway through the third quarter. It's all Longhorns. In Austin, Texas, 6th Street is the party street. Longhorn players prohibited from going down there. Cannot go down there. 10:30 curfew every night. I mean, I Aaron, heard, you know, I hear Jesse wants to go down there. Make yeah, sure yeah. the number there tonight. Yeah. Let's well, check down with Aaron Andrews. The latest on Colt McCoy's situation. In just a second here as the Aggies go back to work in a hole. Second and 13. It's Goodson behind Lane. They take it to him. McGee. Look downfield, now fires across the middle, and the catch is made by Jeff Fuller. He has a first down at the 35. Aaron? Hey, Chris, when Cole McCoy ran that touchdown in, he kind of leapt up in the air and, and hit pretty hard. He ran over to the sidelines afterwards, talked to Matt Brown. They told me he got the wind knocked out of him. Not only that, his right elbow was bandaged up, and when he came over to talk to Matt Brown, he was pointing to his right knee. Sat over on the sidelines for a bit. As you can see, the training staff looking at him. I got to tell you, the back of his uniform is just filthy. I mean, the guy has taken hits all night. Got the elbow wraps up, pointing at the knee. <laughs> yeah, he was close to being knocked woozy in the first half as McGee fires along the sidelines and a nice diving catch by Terrence McCoy. So. McGee in a bit of a rhythm here, but the hole just keeps getting bigger every time he gets the ball yeah, back. It, it's a big hole, but you see why Stephen McGee in high school, all he ever did was throw the football. He came to AM, got into the running uh, mechanisms there, but uh, the guy's got an arm and can throw it when he's given the time. He's hit 11 of his last 12. It's a ringing endorsement if Mike Sherman says you're a good quarterback that can play at the next level. After all, Mike Sherman coached Brett Favre in Green Bay all those years. This is Cyrus Gray now. And here's the tailback. And he's got the pitch. Dodging guys in the backfield and dragged down for a loss by Kendall. A flag is down on the far side of the field. Offsides. Defense number 33. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, there's been a movement here. A couple different fronts. A, a Facebook page created that already has 17,700 members and a, a website 4535.com they want folks to remember the score October the 11th in the Cotton Bowl when the Longhorns came from behind a couple touchdowns in the last seven minutes to beat Oklahoma and of course the posters are the folks that these guys are aiming this campaign at they make up two-thirds of the BCS formula Oklahoma in front of the Longhorns and both of the polls that make up the BCS and the AP poll as well, for that matter, and, and they were behind Texas until last week's devastating win by OU over Texas Tech, the one team that has beaten Texas. So, the guy who started this Facebook page is a sophomore here at UT, Austin Talbert, and he joins us on a headset here. All the signs passed out, Austin. All yeah. the Facebook hits. I mean, what are you hoping to get across here? Do you think you can actually have an impact with this grassroots campaign? Well. I mean, I hope we have an impact. I mean, either that or we just watch them pass us. And this is a team we already beat by 10 points on a neutral field. And it's your most hated rival. So uh, it's just not a team you want to fall behind in the BCS and lose your chance at a Big 12 and national championship. And hang in there. McGee pump faking on second and one and chased out. To avoid a loss, he throws the ball away at the last second. 
I mean, you passed out, what, 30,000 of these 45, 35 signs so that our cameras would, would show them here, Austin, and there's going to be a, a flyover in Stillwater, Oklahoma, with a, a plane carrying a banner with that final score. Yeah, we're just, uh, I guess we think the voters maybe, we just want to really make sure they see it. I mean, I have a bad memory, too, so a month and a half, you know, you can forget things. So we're really just trying to remind it, 10-point win, 45-35, neutral side. Well, but should, it, should a Texas Tech student come up with a 39-33.com, and they, they did get you guys head-to-head. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no comment as the wheels are turning in Lubbock. Wayne Gary's well, for a first down. <laughs> I mean, I would expect, you know, I mean, if they were as creative and as organized and as politically minded as we were, maybe they would. Okay. There's, there's a you shot across the battle, there, Lubbock. Austin. Hey, you, you know, you need to figure out how to get to those 17,000 members, though. you got to make sure some of those guys count for hey, you. I'm not checking it right now, but I bet it's over 18,000. And now that we're getting the shout-out, I'm going to say like 30,000 by the time the game's over. All right. Well, well, I think it's just neat. A, a sophomore here, you're using the Internet, the most powerful tool on the planet to try to you know, get some awareness. Who knows if it'll have any effect. I don't think a lot of coaches who vote in the poll visit Facebook. On this shovel pass, this is Gray. And a short well, game there. I, hey. I haven't got to see the screens. I just really want to know if, if this... If we're seeing it, I mean, how many times are we seeing the sign? Is it really a... Uh, because the idea was just uh, viral. And, uh, well, maybe. That's it's okay. not viral you, anymore. Like, you like you right take there. care of the campaign. We'll, we'll direct the camera shots. But I think, that, I think we'll talk more about it in the second half because style points are, are going to be, you know, kind of the issue from here on out. It's at 28. Hey, can I say hi to my grandma? It's the first Thanksgiving I've ah. ever been there. You know, and Austin, I really miss you, Grandma. Austin, you just shouldn't be so bashful, you know. It's one of those deals just... Step on up. This is Goodson reversing field. A flag is down as Goodson breaks free. Tight ropes down inside the five. But we'll check the flag. Austin, thanks for joining us. We wish you the best. Happy Thanksgiving to you, your grandmother, and everybody else who's... Thank, thanks, guys. Join the Facebook group. Okay. I'll, I'll explain what Facebook is to Craig in a minute. I, I ask your kids, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I do, but I think they'd call us a creep if we joined... <laughs> Goodson got him down inside the five, but a 32-yard game. Offense number 74, nice. Langwood. The 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. Yeah, they got less Grimes. He's thrown a couple of nice blocks tonight, but as he sits on the field there, the leg whip penalty will cost him that 32-yard gain. Mm. They really have been so beaten up on this offensive line. It, injuries forcing guys to play positions they don't usually play, forcing backups to try to step up against this monster D-line of Texas. Yeah, it's been tough. And just to touch on Mike Sherman for a second, we had a chance to talk to him. We were talking about it earlier about the rebuilding process at Texas A&M. And he told us he wants to get Texas A&M back to the days where they were always ranked in the top 10. Back in like early 90s when they were consistently winning the Southwestern Conference championships. And he wants this game to be significant. He wants this Texas, Texas A&M game, to be for the Big 12 South title. That's yeah. his goal. And that's the direction a lot of people at A&M really feel he's the guy to take them there. Well, the one thing that I think, Chris, to your question a little earlier about, uh, you know, the article has A&M become Baylor and Baylor surpassed them. The Aggies have a great tradition. They've got a great campus, great facility. It's going to be mighty hard for Baylor to even come close to that. Second and 14 after they mark off that penalty. And he has time, delivers incomplete. Try to get it to Cyrus Gray. Yeah, incredible support as you, as you would expect at Texas A&M. I mean, it still drew more than, what, 80,000? Contributions are way up. The facilities are very good. And a lot of things are in place. But there are still folks who wonder, you know, was Sherman the right hire? Joe Kynes, defensive coordinator, the veteran, has been everywhere. It was a tough season for him. Well, you're going to have, I think, a, a rebound, a, a, a trampoline effect for the Big 12 South, the Big 12 overall, the success they've had this year, Jesse. Great quarterbacking, great receiving, great coaching, more kids coming to this conference. Third and 14, McGee has time, delivers. It's caught, fighting back towards his quarterback was Jeff Fuller, but he gave up a lot of yards to make that catch, and it'll be fourth and about seven. Second round on the tackle. Fuller, another one of those true freshmen. There are some talented young guys that have blossomed as the season has gone along here for A&M. Patsu 
they had to step up. Look at this. Seventy-six percent of the offensive yards this year for Texas A&M have come from freshmen and sophomores. We talk about the Miamis of the world and the Georgia Tech, the young teams. This Texas A&M team, extremely young, particularly on offense. Play clock at three and fourth and seven. And a first down. He flipped it to Keandre Smith out of the backfield, and he's inside the 25. I'm just very impressed with Stephen McGee. McGee knows he's got the composure out there to go on right now. Early in the game, I thought he was thinking more about his body and avoiding people. But Keandre Smith finding in the opening, going in open space. They beat Jared Norton, the linebacker, a mismatch there. Got 14 yards. And this is Gray. Goes a stiff arm and earns about four yards. Boy, you see Aggies look at the a lot of linemen that, taking time to get up off the ground. I mean, this this is a uh, fruity, banged up, valiant group going out yeah, look there Look at right Lee now. Grimes. This guy is going to need shoulder surgery as soon as the season is over. He's had ankle problems, knee problems. You saw him helped off. Now he's back in there just trying to go. Well, the Warrior. And they're not playing against the powder puff defensive line either. They got Brian Arapko out there, Roy Miller, the defensive tackle. He squats. 690 pounds. I mean, these are animal beasts of the front of Texas. McGee still has it, and he is hammered. Ryan Palmer on the corner blitz. How about the eyes of Palmer off the corner? Not just going for the reverse, but seeing it, making the adjustment. Well, the big reverse on this play is designed to slow down a defensive end, worried about the cutback, <laughs> but not a blitzing cornerback. And but maybe Palmer. if you're good, do you, you maybe bump him? I know that's not your assignment, but you see him coming after your quarterback. It's just called playing the game. Just play the game a little bit. Could you go off the, the, the design of the play there to keep your quarterback from getting hammered on the blind side? McGee. A shot downfield, robbed it for Tannehill, but he was well covered, and it was well overthrown. Ducky Brown, stride for stride with the converted quarterback. Okay, a difference for you now. Greg Davis has, has worked with Colt McCoy about managing the game. you got a fourth and long situation. Manage it. Get where you have a chance with a, a realistic fourth down you can go uh, for. That's it. a great point. Understand the play call. Understand when a shot is called to take that shot. A lot of times a play gets called. There is a deep route, but it's intended to go somewhere else. And, you know, down by 25. There's a 49-yard field goal attempt for Bullock. This would be his longest by three yards. I mean, I guess they're just... What? Try, <laughs> trying to build on something here with these, these field goal attempts? Prime time, presented by Hampton Hotels from the Coliseum at 8 o'clock Eastern time. How about if Texas wins this football game tonight? Texas move in, moves in to number two in terms of all-time wins. Yep. For 830 wins, it's the first time since 1932 that Michigan and Notre Dame have not been number one and number two in all-time wins. Okay, the Longhorns share that second position with the Irish. I'll tell you what, they, since Mac Brown got here, they jumped past Alabama and Nebraska to get up to a tie for number two. Look, it begs the question, what do the Irish have to do to get back on track? Can the Irish they get may back not on catch track? This. Yeah, can they get back on track? <laughs> From 49 yards, Brantley boots it. Will it get there? No. Nope. Missed it wide right. Minute 10 to play in this third quarter. Three of the Applebee's weekend menu. Of course, that big showdown in Stillwater. Sooners a touchdown favorite on the road. Four to Florida State. And I, I love that game in Corvallis. Quiz Rogers, the guy that we saw way back early in this season just destroy USC, not going to be able to go. So the Beavers and Danny Langsdorf, the coordinator, have to get creative. They did last week, they did. right? You know, they got great. Of La Boy Val, he didn't play the quarterback. They went with Canfield, the second team guy. So, I mean, this is a good football team, good coaching staff. Oregon State wins. They go to the Rose Bowl. McCoy on first down, wanted to go downfield. Now fires and it's almost intercepted. He was looking for his running back downfield, Rosie Whitaker, and it's broken up by Dixon, the linebacker. Good coverage there. Yes, the Beavers win, and they're in Pasadena and USC. 
Assuming they don't stumble down the stretch, probably a BCS at large, but so big implications, 44-year drought for Oregon State. But the Civil War is always feisty. And you wonder with LeGarrette Blunt, Jeremiah Johnson, can that Oregon State defense hold up against that running attack Oregon? They're special. That Dr. Rogers out there, that, that, ooh, that, that Civil War takes on a whole new meaning. We saw the game. We saw Oregon State beat USC. We were there. We did the yeah. game. And, and you know, we've seen those players. They don't. They're not intimidated. They understand what their their, their accomplishments can be. But they had Jock is Rogers. Yeah, yes. I understand. But they're still a good football oh, team. No, you, yeah, oh, you've got James Rogers, his brother, yeah, and absolutely. Sammy Strada, the guys who were the heroes in that rally against Arizona. But I, I, the pressure, they have to handle the mental part of it, too. The Rose Bowl sitting out there, it's been almost a half century. Play. You think they'll be crazy, though, at home? Uh, they'll they'll be, be cranked up in research. Absolutely. Yeah. McCoy fires over the middle. Shipley. Jordan Shipley. Gets a block. Heads to the end zone. And is shoved out at the two. The roommate took it up. Longhorn thought that Shipley got the pylon. They're pleading their case in the corner. Do you remember, Chris, earlier in the deal when you talked about the body blows this defense was taking? Yep. You're wearing them out and you're just punching them and they're grinding them. Now you're seeing the results of that. And Shipley, how about the UT teammates working downfield for him? And you see Shipley's ability to run in the open field, but that play got set up by the protection for Colt McCoy. Ooh, did the ball get yeah, over that, that looked like that plane there? Across the plane. In the air before Shipley hit the ground. Man, what a great player Shipley's been for this football team this year. Chris, they needed wide receivers to step up. Oh, I don't know. Can't uh, tell that, that left foot may have come down first. Let's see, he's airborne. Left Ball foot, breaking left, the plane. Left foot. Oh, I think uh, his foot may have come down short of the yeah. goal line. Great effort, though. Let's take wow. a look at it. How about presence of mind? Oh. Protecting the ball. They can't see there. Yeah, I think his foot touched just short of the goal line. Got to be careful, right, Jesse? If you're going to hold that ball out there like oh, that, listen, coaches you tell can their, drop it. It's a touchback. Coaches tell their players all the time, if you're going to stretch the football over the goal line, make sure you have two hands on it. <laughs> they and just, it, just what tell do me. From that angle, it's close. If you're going to stretch it, make sure you get it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't fumble, don't come back over here. And Shipley had really been held in check. Senior wanting to make a, a big play. That's just his third catch. The longest play of the night so far. We talked about style points earlier. If this thing goes to 35-3, we haven't even been in the fourth quarter yet. I'm impressed. I don't think they'll stop scoring. Texas. Well, Mac Brown might substitute in as he traditionally does in the fourth quarter. But that doesn't mean that UT's second team guys aren't going to want to go out there and put points on the board. Or will they leave number 12 in for the fourth quarter? A little bit of it. Because he's going for the pose, man. I'm telling you. He's got the stage tonight just like the team's got the stage tonight. And he's making the most of his stage. <laughs> and, of course, Sam Bradford will get his chance in the Bedlam game. Paul Tim McCoy Tebow's right got a couple more games. Paul McCoy right now, 22 of 26. 302 yards, two touchdowns. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down of the one. No touchdown. I think the spot is actually pulled back from where the football was when Chipley's foot hit the ground. It's outside of the one-yard line. But that just seems a formality of Benaya and big old Cody Johnson, number 31, 255-pound freshman. Well, and heading into the yeah, fourth third, quarter, third pretty They'll switch in. That'll make the students at the other end excited. <laughs> <laughs> and Texas making a strong statement here. Fifteen minutes to play on Thanksgiving night in Austin. 28-3 for the Horns. in Texas as the fourth quarter begins. The Longhorns try to pile it on a bit. A first and goal just outside the one into the 68-yard hookup between hunting and fishing buddies. Colt McCoy and Jordan Shipley. 
on the doorstep. Expect to see big old Cody Johnson, who is something of a specialist back. He has 10 rushing touchdowns, most of them about a yard or two away. But this is Obanaya behind Johnson. And McCoy keeps it. And scrambles and has to just throw it away, so they try to get cute on first and goal. That might have been an effort to pad some of McCoy's stats yep. right there. That would have been an easy situation just to run the football, <laughs> try to get McCoy another oh. touchdown pass, make the stats look better. Well, Here we are now, he's on second down. That hurts his 84% completion rate before yeah. that pass right there. <laughs> he has had a good night, though. Oh, great. He, he's, been a, he's been a warrior on the field, taking a lot of hits. Short of the goal line. Wow. Aggie defense, Johnson, which the fits, carry. you know, the, the spirit of this school just does not surrender. Great. This point. game is hopeless, but they will always dig in. Absolutely. Okay. That's an excellent point, pal. I mean, you know, you talk about a unit out there that's been on the field a lot, and they brought it. That's Featherston just stopping 255 pounds of forward motion for no gain. We're all sitting right at the one. The backup linebacker is the man down. Yeah, they've, they've obviously been embarrassed as a defense. Some big scores. You know, in recent years, they, they took some beatings in, in Franchoni's administration, but they, they would, the fans would always hang in at home no matter how lopsided it got, and the guys would always play hard. We'll take a break. Third and goal for the Horns when you come back. Aggies defense trying to make a stand at the one-yard line. Put Roy Miller, the defensive tackle, into the ballgame as a blocker. The long horns. He goes about 300 pounds. Cody Johnson lined up in front of Obanaya. Muscling into the end zone for a touchdown. Big old Cody behind the block from the defensive tackle is 11th rushing touchdown this season. D Lyman loves that. Get in there, be part of a touchdown. Pure power down near the goal line. Absolute total power down by the goal line. This Texas offense has worn out the Aggies defense. And Miller, 99, you see him there, big fella. <laughs> Boy, he was great in our meetings, wasn't he? You talking about intensity, talking about this game? How would you feel if you were a Ooh. linebacker having to deal with him lead blocking you, and he squats <laughs> 690 pounds? Yeah, that's what, 300 leading 260 pounds into the end zone. Set up by the long catch and run of Jordan Shipley. Johnson punches it in, and the style points begin to pile up. 35-3 now with 14-25 to play. There's unfortunately a lot more to say than that. Oklahoma can make their own case. Even Texas Tech, which we haven't even talked about tonight. Now this is how the next chapter in all this decades ago, because strange things happen. You know, Stoops' teams had its way with... The Cowboys in recent years, but a couple of times Oklahoma State has risen up and, and spoiled potential championship season. Well, not long ago when we were talking about Oklahoma State and their offense and how powerful they were. I mean, this is a very good football team. Playing at home, Jesse, you know for a fact that they're deep. In, they, they have the athletes capable of winning oh, the game. Uh, yeah, and if you look at Zach Robinson, Kendall Hunter, Des Bryant, there are players out there that can change the game yeah. on any given snap. Brett Venable did a great job last week against Mike Leach, had a great defensive game plan. Can Oklahoma duplicate that against another high-scoring offense in Oklahoma State? This is Gray at the five-yard line. And Cyrus Gray wrestled down yet. The thing is, you know, Kendall Hunter is not 100%. We'll have to see how much he can go for the Cowboys on Saturday night as we send it to Reese for a Sports Center right now. Thank you. Reese, thank you. McGee rolls left, fires, and it's way off the target. I tell you, the, the Longhorns, they will not let up. Will Muschamp will dial up the pressure. McGee's been chirping and uh, woofing a lot tonight. Longhorns defense still smelling blood. How about Mac Brown, the decision last week to make the designate coach, not in waiting, but the designated man to replace him when he comes out, Will Muschamp. How about the Rays is going to get next season right. as a coordinator? 900,000 bucks. Yo. That's a lot of good. <laughs> that's some good Thanksgiving right there. That was big time head coach money less than 10 years ago. <laughs> McGee batted away. 
Aaron Lewis getting on the act from the tackle position. I think to me, it's just the difference about this Texas defense. A lot of times you see dominant defenses, active defenses that are able to get pressure from the side of the pocket. But you look each and every snap, look at the push up the middle of the field that Texas gets. And as a quarterback, there is nowhere to step up. Muschamp as intense as ever. Up 35-3. Third and ten. They bring some heat. Dumps it off low and a nice shoestring catch by Tannehill at the 30. But Earl Thomas steps him right there after a seven-yard gain. And they're well short of the first down on fourth down now. Yeah, you wouldn't expect anything other than pressure to come their way. But this is a very fast, a young secondary that's only going to get better week after week. The more they're with Will Muschamp, the better this football team's going to become. What really helps the secondary, they have two freshmen playing safety right now, is that pass rush up front. So when you can get pressure with only four players, you're really helping out a young, inexperienced secondary on the back end. Now they need three yards here, or else Texas is going to have a very short field. It's complete for a first down. Tannehill, and to his credit, coming to AM thinking his chances were good to play quarterback, learning a completely new position. He just wants to get on the field and contribute. And you see where they made the switch. You know, and he got a lot of sound advice from his father. His father, Tim Tannehill, was a quarterback at Texas Tech, was backing up Billy Joe Tolliver, and then was forced to make the switch to wide receiver. So in the family, good athletes, playing quarterback. But you know what's funny about this Tannehill? He doesn't want to be left out of the mix for next year's quarterback spot. He always reminds the coaches, hey, don't forget about me now playing QB. That's what I want to do. Well, we'll see. I think Gerard Johnson might have something to say about that. The price of ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. And in part by Samsung Mobile, proud sponsor of ESPN Rivalry Week. It's a serious business here. How many, how many hats do you own, James? I, I got a few hats. Yeah. Not as many as I got Bevos, but <laughs> hats are hard to stay on when you're riding a horse. No, it, you need that little there's a lid. chin strap. There you go. That's a lid. Take it to Kendra Smith, Hannahill, the quarterback, thinks about throwing, but he'll be sacked and loses the ball. Henry Melton got the fumble, first turnover of the game, and Tannehill not making a strong case for the 0-9 quarterback job. <laughs> oh, must chap. There you go, Mr. Melton. Thank you very much. And I bet this right here will be some goodie bag material for Tannehill thinking about playing quarterback because there are a lot of folks that get around football. Mr. Arakpo from behind does not give up on the play. Arakpo. And Melton combining on the force fumble and a recovery. Two of the seniors, the bookend defensive lineman. And the Horns take over at the 32. McCoy still in the game. Andrew McGee. And this is Shipley. Some blocks on the edge for Jordan Shipley, who gets about nine. So McCoy in and still throwing, adding to an already superb evening. Well, just the accuracy from McCole McCoy all night has been outstanding, as we've expected, but he's really been able to hurt Texas A&M tonight with his arm and with his legs. I, the, the, the award goes to college football's most outstanding player and a guy who's got his team in the hunt for the national championship again tonight on the field, helping his team dominate a rivalry. This is big Cody Johnson. A chance to carry it, not from the one, but he reaches the end zone anyway. Well, the short yardage specialist with his longest run of the season. And they turn that turnover into a quick strike. 23 yards on that touchdown run. And the Horns achieving what they hoped. An emphatic victory. Yes, settling the score with the Aggies for the last couple of years, but also making a statement. 
Here's Hunter Lawrence. And check out the run of the season for Cody Johnson here. Not a bad Santa wish list there. Yeah, keep wishing. Big man breaking free. It's getting uglier. Hello, this is Jeff Johnson, uh, Chief Warrant Officer 4 with the Headquarters 4th Infantry Division at Camp Liberty, Baghdad, Iraq. want to wish the Texas Longhorns the best of luck in their upcoming game with Texas A&M. Hook them horns. Hi, this is Major Wayne Morado with the 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Armored Division at Bob Hammer, Iraq. I want to give a shout out to the Texas Longhorn football team. Hook them horns. Thanksgiving wishes to all of our troops serving overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. Holidays. Tough times. Military families are separated, certainly. Lots of Texans you know, in the armed forces. Huge yeah, percentage. Yeah, there is a huge percentage yeah. of Texans that are in the armed forces. And, uh, of course, all the men and women from all over the United States. We appreciate greatly. The Aggies will have to wait for another year. This is payback time for the folks in Burn Orange. Five touchdowns in their last five possessions. The boot by Tucker. Cyrus Gray. Gets a little bit of a hole. And the speedy freshman gets a couple blocks downfield. And is finally shoved out of bounds. Not by Colt McCoy, but the other number 12, Earl Thomas. Who chased him down? You can see why Cyrus Gray is part of the the future for the Aggies. Absolutely, and he's a true freshman coming into the game. Was third in the nation in kickoff return yardage. Had a 98-yard kickoff return touchdown against Oklahoma early in the year, but that was a gaping hole. It wasn't a lot of vision required on that. He was just able to use his great speed get to the outside. He's the type of guy that's going to have a big impact on this football team offensively and on special teams for years to come. He came in third nationally in the statistic of kickoff return yardage. And Gerard Johnson back in the game. And he's sitting down as we check with Reese Davis. All right. Reese, we'll talk some Heisman here in this fourth quarter. Bradford versus McCoy versus Tebow. And Gerard Johnson fires to the end zone and touchdown. He found Jeff Fuller. The true freshman beating Deion Beasley, and finally, the Aggies find the end zone from 33 yards. How about Gerard Johnson being on the bench, sitting over there the whole game, expecting to play the entire game. Fuller, nice job with the footwork at the point of attack up there, and just keeps running. Fuller, very impressive for a guy six foot four. He's a true freshman, and with that touchdown, now breaks the Texas A&M record for most receiving touchdowns in a season. That's his nine. And, and you know, Chris, I saw him in the spring. He was nowhere near. He came out of high school at Christmas, started, enrolled, went through spring practice. Nowhere near ready to play in the Big 12. Came back after the summer, looked like a ball player. That's his ninth touchdown. And through freshman season, Aggies will go for two, empty backfield. With Gerard Johnson. And takes off design run with the horns. We're ready for it. And Johnson is stopped short. Earl Thomas on the tackle. So the 62-yard kickoff return by Gray sets up the touchdown pass. Johnson to Fuller. 42-9 now. How about that Oklahoma deal, though? You saw Sam Bradford there, and you're talking about the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. I, I go back to Art Bryles at Baylor. He said that when he played Oklahoma, the thing that impressed him about their football team was the calm demeanor, the matter-of-fact attitude they had, how they went about their business and were just overwhelming. The bottom line with Sam Bradford right now is for a guy that's thrown 42 touchdown passes, tops right now in the Football Bowl subdivision, he's played well week in and week out. And even if you go back to the head-to-head -head loss against Texas, Sam Bradford still threw five touchdown passes is in that game. He's been sensational all season long in every game he's played. And you can't really blame McCoy for Texas's loss either. So it, it's tough. I mean, we can you know, look at the stats. You, you have to believe that Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree, Craig, as great as their seasons have been, that beatdown on the big stage in Norman certainly going to affect yeah. voters. Harrell was a clear straw poll front runner going in. Well, but he went head to head, you know, and, and, yeah. and Sam Bradford 14 out of 19 in that football game, and I think they now have to take a back seat and hope for some things to happen. You now it's Bradford that has to go handle his business on the road in Stillwater. It's been a tough place. 
Williams didn't have a man deep. And Malcolm Williams goes back. They're expecting a short kickoff. Goes back and retrieves it and gets shot to the 13. Now, you, you, you seemed to give a lean earlier to McCoy over Bradford. Is that, is that the way you're, you're leaning right now with Man. your Heisman ballot? The Heisman ballot's yes. sent out this week? And, and you know what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove the emotions that voters have about the process. And I'm trying to think back, and I'm trying to think of the body of work that the University of Texas had when they had that four-week run against all those great football teams, and they come up short at Texas Tech. Cold McCoy was the guy. I guess one question you could ask yourself, we talked about this a little bit earlier, between Graham Harrell, Sam Bradford, Colt McCoy, Tim Tebow, which team would suffer the most if you took one of those guys out of the equation? You saw McCoy on the sidelines as the backup. John Childs, a sophomore from Dallas, hands to Vondrell McGee. I thought Mac might put in McCoy, you know, for a couple plays in the series, maybe give him a curtain call. He's still got the helmet on. You, you know he wants to go back in the football game. But Mac Brown told us yesterday, I'm fourth quarter, I'm seven. He wants to go back in the football game. I would argue it has less to do with Big 12 championship or less to do with the Heisman Trophy as it does going out and beating Texas A&M yeah. because he's lost twice now in a row. He didn't, didn't like the Aggies that much. Oh. He, he is, as we said, not only lost, was knocked out of the game. And Childs, who's a Pretty talented guy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McCoy has another season. Childs is a sophomore. You didn't answer your question that you posed. If which player, which team would suffer the most if they lost their quarterback? I would argue it would be Colt McCoy in Texas and Tim Tebow in Florida. In my opinion, if you remove those guys, Florida and Texas suffer the most. But is that is that the criteria that you use? No, uh, absolutely not. No, but not I all. think it's something because this it. race is very tight. And, and, you know, to be fair to Sam Bradford, you know, Sam Bradford is a dominant man over there. He is accurate. He has all the weapons. And, I mean, he disperses the football. Without him, they're not the same football team. Giles fires over the middle, and it's complete. Remember, this guy coming in was 10 of 11 throwing the football. Montre Weber makes her first catch of the night. So he actually has a higher quarterback rating than McCoy. Oh, and, and he didn't have a lot of completions last year. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> heading in late in the season, he, he didn't have very many at all. His completion percentage was minuscule. But you could see the progress during yep. the summer. And watching him in 7-on-7, seven seven, how he threw the football. He's getting better. He's a fast player. And, and Greg Davis and Mac Brown planned on using him a lot this year. They were going to have a combo package for Childs and McCoy. But Colt got so hot, they just left it alone. McGee will slip down for a loss. But that's a that's a factor too, guys. Is that you know, in this modern era, we're, we're pollsters with two thirds of the BCS, and the BCS, in the, in the case of the Big 12 South, is the fifth tiebreaker, but the one that could come into play. Taking your starters out, you see less and less of that. I mean, you don't see Urban Meyer showing a lot of mercy. And Max said it too. Bob Stoops yeah. showing a lot of mercy. We're I mean, losing sportsmanship. Is what we're doing. Where is it where where a team can't show? sportsmanship on the field. When you're out there and you're trying to throw you can. another touchdown, you can, but you yeah, but nowadays if you do that, you get penalized by the voters who are looking for big points. He dragged down as he tried to break free. The third and five. This goes back to the question, you know, we've seen all these signs tonight, 45-35. How relevant is it really? If we have a three-way tie at the end of the year in the Big 12 South, do you think voters would kind of put all the head-to-heads -head aside because everybody's beating each other, or I wonder sometimes if voters, because Texas Tech just lost by 44 points to Oklahoma, if, if a lot of voters have kind of just said, nah, Texas Tech to the side, we're really looking at Oklahoma, Texas, and that's when... That's the emotions that I'm talking about. That's, that's the, the problem when that with the becomes system. relevant, and that comes down to the individual voters. Yeah, but that's what, you got to get rid of your emotions to be a fair voter in this process, and you have to think about the body of work. I saw that Danny Gore got into the breakup. Childs flirted with an interception. And the Longhorns will have to punt, breaking the streak of five straight possessions. But here's, here's the key thing, guys. The Harris Poll, which has 114 pollsters, that is a very slim margin for Oklahoma. Now, the coaches, this is the, perhaps the more surprising thing. You know, of course, it always tells me the coaches understand head-to-head -head what happens in the neighborhood. The margin's much bigger. So what will the coaches do? The Harris Poll voters watching this game, watching the Sooners and the Cowboys. You know the computers are going to give Oklahoma a slight edge after they play Oklahoma State. If they win. And this is lovely punt, partially blocked, but it's going to work out okay for Texas as it rolls out of bounds at about the 41. I'm just really glad that this last coach's poll, when they vote, 
that it'll be made public because all of the agendas that might be out there, we'll find out about them. It's a sport of agendas. Bomb Soup doesn't have a vote, but there are seven guys in the Big 12 who do. College football prime time presented by Applebee's. It was rivalry week, and most of the 95,000 or so here in Austin still in their seats. This one's long been decided, but it is sweet to see Texas pay back A&M, and they want to be here for every play. As Johnson scrambles and gets back to the line of scrimmage. You know what? You don't see, you don't see too many folks leave. <laughs> you get right to the end. Yeah, two years in a row, the Aggies have messed up the Longhorn season. And the players really, you could almost sense it. They knew what was at stake. And, and Mac Brown made sure that they didn't have a really good Thanksgiving dinner, that they thought more about playing the game than they did turkey dinner. Johnson fires. Mrs. Fuller. Reese, what do you have for us? Yeah, Reese, that's the weird thing with this system, too. Texas must root for Oklahoma. If, if the Cowboys win, Texas Tech wins the Big 12 South because of the head-to-head -head against Texas. It wouldn't be a three-way tie. they got to root for the Sooners, but not to win by too much. Right? I mean, Johnson, buying time, bumping into a lineman, and he'll be sacked. Arakpo, got him. It was a group of Longhorns. Sack number five. Now this Longhorn defense absolutely showed up tonight. Arakpo and Miller yesterday in the meeting said, Boy, we will be ready for this football game. All night long, the pressure's been there, and they should have been there, Jesse. They played up to their potential against this Aggie offensive line that wasn't real strong. So the low punt, and Shipley retreating. And just ducks down at the 20. Don't forget another rivalry game where you, you cannot write off the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hey, you know, second Virginia key game in the other division. You know, a little bit follow up on that question there. If Oklahoma State wins, remember Mac Brown said yesterday, what happens though if Texas Tech goes in, plays Missouri in the Big 12 title game, loses, and all of a sudden we've sat at home and we have a chance to play for the national championship? Well, under that theory though, yeah. Once again, you'd have a, a non-winner of their division in the national championship game, which we've, we've had a couple of times. It's happened in the Big 12. Oh. It was Nebraska. Okay, well, let's take this deal here. So what? The Big 10? Pac-10? They're not playing conference championship games out there. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm just saying that it's one of the funky yeah. components of this system. That it's become almost fashionable to defend the BCS and because it's been attacked for so long. And the, the playoff proponents are, are really just howling into the wind. Even the president of the left. This is Johnson. And the big man breaking free. Cody Johnson into Aggie territory. And he didn't want to run out of bounds. <laughs> it, it took a couple of Aggies to push the 255-pounder out after a 61-yard game. Who says he's a short yardage specialist? And a 255-pound back is not supposed to have this kind of vision and speed to get outside. He's not used to running outside like that, but at 255 pounds down the sideline, it's not going to take just one defensive back to get him out of bounds. You're going to need a pack of them. He's had runs of 23 for a touchdown and 61 yards. Got it again. He says, all season long, I've been going in there when the ball's in the one-yard line and doing my simple job. Coach, look what I can do if you just give me the rock in another spot on the field. Well, I can assure you one thing that Johnson doesn't have is a lot of stamina at this thing, at this stage of his uh, game. And 17-6 average is not bad. But you're right, Jesse. The guy's clearly got speed. Oh, he does. He's got a lot of vision. He's kind of showing you that. He looks a little bit like Jerome Bettis back there running his big body inside with the ability to stretch it outside. Very, very impressive. And he's fourth on the depth chart right now at Texas. Charles feeds it to him again. 
Johnson hammering forward. It'll be near the first down marker at the 10 yard line. One thing Mac Brown's been able to do is recruit kids that are very talented, that have been blue chips since they were sophomores in high school, but he's doing a nice job now of transitioning them from thinking they're really good to making sure they prepare like they're good. He's getting the talent out of them now. Mac Brown has a milestone. This will be win number 200. That's I, Jim Sweeney. Closing in on guys like Vince Dooley and Don Nealon in the all-time win list. Division one. Third and short. Sneak it near the nine-yard line. He's like 50-something away from Daryl Royal, the all-time guy here at Texas. You know, and if Matt goes another five seasons the way he goes, catch Coach Royal. Nobody's going to catch these two guys over here. And, and Max says he wants no part of coaching up into his late 70s like Bowden or early 80s like Joe. Well, it's amazing what Mac Brown's been able to do since 1998 to now, 113 wins. This will be his 114th. That's most in the football ball subdivision. He's been incredible. This is Cody Johnson again, fighting forward. Yeah, and Max says, don't misread the situation. Will Muschamp named kind of you know head coach in waiting to, to keep other schools from poaching him off and, and give him a head coach job. I mean, he would have had clearly major offers this year. Don't think that means I'm gonna ride off into the sunset in a couple of years. That's why I used the word designated. Yeah. Yeah. Not in waiting. There's no timetable on this. But I think the ultimate thing was he ensured this year and next year's good football team that if they play for the national championship he's not having another defensive coordinator to have to deal with. Put you on the spot. Will Muschamp, will he be the next head coach here? I think so. Where else is he going to go? Wait 10 years, he's only 47 years old, and if it's handed over when he's 47, he's got a pearl. Cody Johnson hammers down near the two. I ask that because, look, you can, you can give him a, a designate head coach title or whatever, but if, if Mac decides he wants to stick around, I mean, Muschamp is going to continue to get offers, right? And the Mac wouldn't... But where, where does he go, Chris? Jesse, where does he go? You go, you go to a Tennessee or a Clemson, and if you win there, then you hope to get a school like Texas? <laughs> well, Will Muschamp told us he's not battling to have that head coach plaque on his desk. He's young, his family doesn't want to move anymore, loves the city of Austin. His wife wasn't going with him. Absolutely not. <laughs> and so and that Chris, answers your question. And Chris, his, 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 Mac trusts that Will's not going to be backstabbing him with this title. Here's Big Cody going for the hat trick. No, check it. Charles keeps it and walks in. The Aggies fool is the backup quarterback. Directs the touchdown drive and gets into the end zone. Well, Matt Brown right now getting the best of both worlds. You take your starters out, but you continue getting style points. I thought we were going to see Johnson, so did the Aggies. Kyle is just waltzing into the end zone from about a yard and a half away. Now they bring Ryan Bailey. One of these two different kickers. Bailey, the one that hit the left upright with that field goal attempt earlier. Knocks this one through. 40 point lead. Mac Brown really used John Childs in the spring to help push as best he could Colt McCoy. Childs has great vision. He's got the ability to run the football. He's strong in the legs, and he's fast. Yeah, tough night for Matt Featherston. The middle linebacker had him, could not hold him. It's a couple of missed tackles now for Matt Featherston again. He said that was the key for him coming in this game was to tackle well, but Texas done such a good job tonight running the football in all phases of the game. Regardless of who's been the ball carrier, you've just seen the depth and the talent that Texas has in the backfield this year. 536 yards total offense now. Should be the finale for Stephen McGee. McGee's uniform looks like yours after this morning's <laughs> crew game. Mine, mine got dirty in a non-contact game. <laughs> you were all over the place, Fowler. I'm telling you, you look like Crabtree out there today. Uh, Jesse, was he not your go-to guy? There was one drive where I think I completed five consecutive balls to Fowler. He was just working those underneath cross I, I, I said to our, my team at halftime, I said, guys, we have got to take Fowler out of the game. When he comes across, grab him, hold him. Do not let him run by you. I see what your character is about as a head coach. Oh. But look at James Lull. I did get I, I did get beaten deep. Look at that. <laughs> and the ball squid down there. The Aggies cover it up. Well, you know.
Oh, look, see there? There's CF. Look at the wheels. Look at the back of the shirt. Look at the picking up. When you see Hills touching the back of your fanny, that means you're pepping yeah, down okay. the road. Right. Fowler was a hero today on that football field. We lost the game. We lost the you game. You did lose. You, so. got a, you got a little bit of action on, on that touchdown that was caught on you. You got up. Yeah, yeah, Daryl Green gave me a little look. You know, that's all right. It gets sense. chippy out there. Then it gets, it gets competitive. It's all fun until the second half. Daryl came back to me one time. He says, hey, go it to the deep. Yeah, I got Fowler. Okay. He did. Back to this more meaningful game. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, as we, as we watch Johnson, uh, what he would think of you know, getting yanked. A couple three and outs, and he's yanked. And McGee did get into a rhythm for a while. And, Johnson comes back in and throws a touchdown, and he's the guy going forward, but maybe a little chafed at not being given him more of a chance tonight in this game. Well, you know, Gerard Johnson has had a very good season. He's really 20 touchdown passes this year. It's a school record. He's only a sophomore. He's got two years to go. He's going to bounce back. It's important, though, he finishes this game off strong to head into the offseason. Fires. Short sure pass. You know, complete. And I, I think that you know, for a guy who worked at tight end, yeah, he, they weren't trying to get with the season with the quarterback. Johnson was working at tight end. Gets a chance at quarterback, and then it'll be interesting going forward. I mean, the Aggies, you know, next year off this 4-8. and eight. Any chance of, of making a run, of, of challenging the contenders in this division? No, you would not realistically say that. They're going to be young again. They're going to bring some young kids in that are going to be highly rated, but they're still going to be freshmen that they're going to be using next year. A lot of young football players. It'll take a couple of years. He certainly looks the part, though. And he tips up downfield. And a first down out near the 50. Well, a 40-point game inside of a minute and a half. Texas knew they needed style points. In, in, in your opinion, is this a strong enough statement that the last thing that you know they can do before this weekend and, and the posters weigh in? In my eyes, they have dominated this football game, and they're back to being where they were. I like what they did. I'm with you. I'm very impressed. I don't need to see the score up in the 60s to be impressed of domination. We've watched this game now the entirety of the 60 minutes. This has been about as dominant of a performance as you can have in the football team. Again, yeah, it's not a good A&M team, but you rarely see beatdowns in this rivalry. It's the second largest margin of victory in, in series history. In 1898, it was a 48-0 game. The rivalry was only about four years old then. Yeah, but I have to tell you, though, that, that's my feeling. That, I don't think that's what the pulse of the country will be on this, though. Well, I think the pulse of the country is that Oklahoma looked really impressive against Texas Tech. Because it's hard to ignore 65 points scored on the then number two ranking. Sure, and, the they could, and that's They could hang a bunch of the Cowboys, too, yeah, Saturday. And that, and that is reality. That's human perception. And a short catch by Fuller. And he's down inside the 30. Now, who, who are, you know, Lance McElhinney, your former quarterback at SMU? Yeah. You, did you, he's a voter in the Harris Bowl, so he's got, yeah. he's got his four young kids as the bucket makes its way towards Mac Brown. And you guys like Tony Collins, Al Del Greco, Travis Prentice from Miami, Ohio. Great. Can bust you up. Jackie Sherrill here tonight. Gene Corrigan. Legends like Roy Kramer. All <laughs> great Mr. people. They don't know football. And they're, they're part of that 114 person panel in the Harris Bowl. And their opinion counts a lot. As well as the, the 61 coaches who vote. I love those guys and I love Lance. But they don't know enough college football to be voting and having that big an impact on the system. Johnson buying time. Scrambling around. Trying to make a play here. Heaving it downfield. And... Almost intercepted. Chance for Curtis Brown to make a play. Couldn't come up with it. Are you calling your guy out? Huh? Lance McElhinney does not know enough college football. We, we, I know he's got young kids. He's got games to attend on the weekend. He right? watches a game on the weekend. These, these guys in the Harris Bowl watch a football game. You need to have people in there with a system like it is that understand coast to coast. You need to know what Washington's doing. Sure Florida. Florida. Craig, listen, we, we vote in the AP. We watch a million games. I'm not sure I could tell you that Texas or Oklahoma or USC or, or even Penn State, it's tough to split hairs. You have to make a subjective judgment. That, that's the lunacy of the system. No, nobody knows. So you don't know. I don't know. Al Del Greco doesn't know. But it's hard on you and me. Imagine them. No one knows. It's just an opinion. 
Johnson fired underneath and Tannehill can't come up with it. And you, you see there's two buckets making it their way toward their back path for win number 200 here. A little mixology on the sidelines there with the Gatorade. You like the strategy? They have a diversion? Well, I, uh, yeah, or is there a designate cooler? You know, you got to have one for the oh, designate. Fake, fake with one and go with the well, other? No, they, you got two guys there. You got oh, you on the left and you got Muschamp over on the right, you know? You need to be, you need to have guys near the coach that's kind of blocking and shading that peripheral yeah. vision. The last thing you want is the coach turning around and seeing the bucket come right at him. <laughs> now they bring pressure on Johnson. And one more sack for Mustang's defense. Sack number six. And Cole McCoy is our Wrangler five-star player of the game. Before he was relieved. Tremendous night. 23 of 28. And they got Max finally as he was talking to McCoy. There was the diversion you're talking about. That was it. Huh? Great job. Sharing it up with the quarterback. Cole McCoy's a good diversion bad. also. I bet there's going to be a guy. That's the guy. <laughs> Will got it too. <laughs> now the two-game losing streak to the Aggies is over. Must champ mob by his defensive guys. What a first season as a coordinator. And one final reminder to those of you out there who have a vote. And those of you in Norman who don't, but don't want to see that score posted. Now, you know, remember, they, they need the Sooners' help. Oklahoma has to beat the Cowboys. Texas have a chance. There's the quarterback, the decoy. Hey, coach. Oh, great, he great, great year. Hey, great. Hey, here it goes. <laughs> oh, he's sneaky. Did he get a bat, too? <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, we'll see. We, we won't know, obviously, until... Until Sunday when the polls are released, computers will have their say, and we think move Oklahoma ahead of Texas, assuming that they can take care of the Cowboys, but you can't make that assumption. I, I think Because Oklahoma State's cool. out there, and the, and the Red Raiders are saying, wait a minute, we, we need an upset, and we're going to Kansas City. In the meantime, Mac Brown visiting with Aaron Andrews. Chris, thanks so much. Coach, you mentioned to us this week, you told your players, if you don't play well, I can't stand up for you with this BCS thing. Now that you've beaten the Aggies 49-9, what will your stand be? Well, I'm proud of these kids. It's, uh, there's three great teams in the Big 12 South with Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and us. And, and obviously, voters have a real tough decision. I think the flaw is in the system. It's a good system, but, but it, it doesn't like what happened tonight uh, to come up. So I think we can see through the weekend, but this team's a heck of a football team. And obviously, they beat Oklahoma uh, back in the, the, during the season and had maybe the toughest four games with Oklahoma, Missouri, Oklahoma State, and Tech that anybody played in the country and, and had the one uh, the last play of the game loss at Tech. So uh, we're going to go wherever they tell us to, uh, but it's going to be hard for somebody not to send this group forward. What's the most important thing you want to get across to voters? Well, the most important thing is this is a great football team and, and a team that works so hard. It, it's what Cold has done for this team is just like what this team's done. This was a team under the radar. People said they couldn't win eight games. Uh, Colt had too many turnovers last year and this and that. Colt's played great. He's been the most valuable player for anybody on our team. And these kids have played great. They've done everything we've asked them to do. So we'll be really proud to go wherever. You told us that you mentioned to Colt, hey, it's your national stage tonight, your way to show the Heisman voters. What did he show the voters tonight? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What did Colt show the Heisman voters tonight on this national stage? Well, in an emotional game where A&M came in with nothing to lose and turned it loose and played great defense early, he took over and started the game, and he did what we needed to do to turn it around. Mac, thanks. Thank you, Aaron. All right, Chris. Aaron, thank you. McCoy accounts for four total touchdowns. Texas wins it by 40. Mac makes his case. <laughs> the Sooners and Bob Soups, who says he's done lobbying, May not have to if they take care of business in Stillwater. So, robbery week will continue. More statements to be made. In the meantime, we're coming up next on ESPN News. Sports Center follows in a second. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig, Jesse, and Aaron, and our entire outstanding football team. For ESPN here in Austin, Texas. I'm Chris Fowler saying so long for now. Sports Center coming up in just seconds. And again, we're over on ESPN News for more big picture talk.